Richard. I want to thank Jane for doing our streaming today. Um, she has stepped up and we're so grateful. If you will, get your bulletins and let's stand and say together our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Lord, thank you for the gift of this new day. This day may be filled with joys and questions, challenges and tears. And we know that you, Lord, will be with us through it all. Praise the Lord. Let's turn in our hymnal to How Great Thou Art, number 77, and sing together.
requests are listed on our bulletin. There are others that you know of. Um, uh, the deaths that have happened this week, there's a funeral this afternoon. Uh, Jerry Clevenger? At any rate, uh, you know for whom you will lift your prayers. And so we go to God in prayer now. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so grateful for every breath we breathe, for all the magnificence that you bring to us. And we pause now to lift our thanksgiving to you. Let us pray. missing the mark. Hear us as we confess our sin and ask forgiveness. Let us pray. where there are those who are suffering and crying out to you, whether it is from disease or natural disaster uh, or a uh, difference of opinions. So much is going on in our world. And we know and trust that you are uh, alert to everything that is happening, that you are in the midst of orchestrating every item, every event, in a fabric that is woven by you, uh, a creation, as we move from the world we live in to a world in which uh, there is peace on earth and there is goodwill from every person to every other person. For all the ways that you are walking with us, we give you thanks and pouring your spirit to us. Make us mindful, open our hearts and minds to hear that you are right with us. For all the ways that you are in South Carolina and the areas in which we live, those of us online, we give you thanks. In South Carolina, we're grateful for a cooler temperature, but a moderate climate in which we live. We ask that you would be with us as we prepare perhaps for uh, raging weather, as we prepare uh, our homes so that they might stay warm. We pray that you would be with us as we are mindful of the weather and the, uh, the natural disasters that can happen, make us prepared and alert to those and alert to the need of our brothers and sisters around the globe from those very disasters. We pray for those children who are in homes where they are, uh, they are awake and they're hungry. We pray that you would Show us where there is need, that we might be able to meet that need for all the ways that you are at work, helping us to be your hands and feet in this world. We give you thanks. We ask that you would hear us as we intercede in prayer on behalf of those we know who are in need. We lift their names specifically, inviting you into their situations. Uh, we do this privately. We pray these things now. Let us pray. Disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I think Catherine is here. Yay! Now, Jean, you tell me where, if we sit here, are we going to be on the camera? Yes. Right here. Hi, Catherine. Welcome. You know, I have a jack o' lantern on my front porch. And I had my grandchildren with me two nights this week, and one is five years old, another's three years old. We went out to see the jack o' lantern, put the battery powered candle in it, turned out all the porch lights, and there it was. The mouth and the eyes could be seen. The next morning, Oliver, the three year old, said, Grammy, let's go out and see the jack o' lantern. So we went out to see the Jack o' Lantern, and I want to say hello to all those online who are joining us. We're glad you're here as well, as well as Catherine in person. Uh, we went outside, and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. He's looking at the Jack o' Lantern, and he looks at me, and he says, Turn out the lights! <laughs> the sun is out. There are some things we human beings just cannot do. There are things that are ordered in the universe by God. We can't turn out the sun during the day, thank you, God. And we don't want to be in control of some of those things that have been put into motion by God to work just the way they need to. So we can have life and breathe, uh, breathe the air that we have. There are miracles that happen like that every day. We don't even notice how the sun we don't think of it often. But even when we get a cut on our hands, the miracle of how our skin just weaves itself back together, even if we have a band-aid for a day or two, that skin weaves back together and is healed. That's a miracle. How wonderful is that? If you've ever tried to fix a, a crack in a vase or a crack in wood, then you know all we can do is glue but our God has a way for our skin to be knit, living tissue back together. It's a marvelous thing. So if we can, let's be mindful that God is at work in those wonderful ways, even as we're looking at each other. Our eyes work so well. It's amazing. Let's pray. Loving God, we are so grateful for the majesty with which creation is working for the ways that you also are with us as individuals and you, you mend our broken hearts and you are with us in so many ways that to comfort us and to bring us abundant life that you have in mind for us. We pray for Catherine and all children that we might know that you are with us and that all that you set into motion is for our highest good we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sweet girl. Let us continue our worship as we bring God's tithes and our offering. Let us pray. Come on up, gentlemen. Just come make your way up during the prayer. Come on up. There you are. Loving God, we are so grateful for your world, and we're grateful for every gift you give, that we might return these gifts to you, and they will be multiplied for your kingdom, right here at Inman United Methodist Church and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.
y'all ended it early. We're out of breath. Thank you all so much. Our scripture reading for the day is from the, from Job, uh, from chapter 38, verses 1 to 7, and then skipping to 34 to 41. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Who is this darkening counsel with words lacking in knowledge? Prepare yourself like a man. I will interrogate you and you will respond to me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you know. Who sets its measurements? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring tape on it? On what were its footings sunk? Who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang in unison and all the divine beings shouted. Skipping to verse 34. Can you issue an order to the clouds so their abundant waters cover you? Can you send lightning so that it goes and then says to you, I'm here? Who put wisdom in remote places? Or who gave understanding to a rooster? Who is wise enough to count the clouds and who can tilt heaven's water containers so that dust becomes mud and clods of dirt make beer? Can you hunt prey for the lion or fill the cravings of lion cubs? They lie in their den, lie in ambush in their lair. Who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God? and wander about without food. You have heard the ancient story. Thanks be to God. Nancy, one of my teachers and friends who died earlier this year, told this story about how God showed God's awesome presence to her. Nancy is one of those people who had a near-death experience at age four. She died for a short time, and then when she came back into her four-year-old body, she remembered having met those in spirit on the other side. She also was left with an incredibly strong communion with the Holy Spirit. When Nancy was in her late 20s, divorced with a small child, a child for whom she was financially responsible, the Holy Spirit gave her some instructions. She was to quit her work in the medical field and begin to learn about massage therapy and other methods of body work like Reiki. In general, she was to become an expert in the mind-body-spirit connection at work in all of us. Now, she had learned over the years just how trustworthy the Holy Spirit is. So she obediently turned in her notice and applied for school in, a, in massage therapy. She then went to the Outer Banks to join her family for a holiday gathering. It was on the beach that she began to argue with God. She cried out in fear about how things were going to turn out. She screamed at God, at spirit, about money, about her lack of money. She screamed at spirit about being a single parent and needing to be a good parent for her child. How am I going to provide for my little girl, she cried. Then she heard in her heart the voice she had known since she was a child. That voice said, walk into the water. So Nancy got up off the beach and walked out into the water up to her knees. The boy spoke to her again, walk out further into the water. So Nancy walked out into the ocean up to her waist. The voice said to her, now hold out your arms, palms up. So Nancy stretched out her arms, palms up. And she stood like that for one minute, then two minutes, 
when a huge fish jumped right into her arms. She was so startled, she pulled in and caught the fish. Nancy was in awe. God had provided a fish large enough to feed the whole family gathered at the beach. The message was unmistakable. The Holy Spirit made it clear to her that day, I will provide for you more than you will ever need. Her complaining stopped. Her dedication to God's plan for her life grew. She was only given that next step, go to massage school. Everything else grew from there. That is a true story. A story not from the Old Testament, a powerful story from our generation about God's coming out of the whirlwind of her life and showing the unmistakable divine presence available to each of us. It is a story, real and true, about the abundance God has in mind for us. It is a story about God's magnificence and magnitude. When was the last time you were awed by the magnitude and magnificence of God? In this story from the book of Job, there has been an outcry from Job from almost, well, certainly from the early chapters. Where is God? Let me make my case. And now, the Almighty God finally makes an appearance. God finally responds to Job in a whirlwind. God tells Job the many ways God's presence can be seen in all of creation. God shares the wisdom of how all things are divinely inspired and influenced. From the earth's foundations to the boundaries of the sea and sky, and through the ordering of the day and the night, God in divine, infinite wisdom has structured for us the heavens and the earth, the water and the land, the day and the night, humanity and heavenly beings, and everything in between. In our text for today, God appears to Job in a storm in true biblical tradition. That is one way God can appear to us. This whirlwind, similar to other Old Testament texts, demonstrates God's physical arrival in the midst of nature's elements. In Ezekiel 1, 4, God is present in a windstorm with a flashing light. In Nahum 1, 3, God's power is in the storm and clouds. Zechariah experiences God in lightning as loud as a trumpet, which we know is the thunder that follows the lightning. And in 2 Kings, God appears in a chariot of fire. And while in 2021 we have an understanding of the weather and even can see these weather events coming, we cannot help but notice a power greater than our own at work in the weather events. It was through the elements of nature that God showed up in Nancy's life. And now God, Job is confronted by God. Where once Job, like Nancy, had questions, concerns, and complaints, he is now silenced and in awe. Where once Job was left with inquiries and thoughts of godlessness, now there is no mistake that God is actively present, face to face with Job. God's presence is undeniable, meaningful, and profound. This appearance is evidence that God has never been absent. God's knowledge throughout this passage is demonstrated in the careful design, the intentional plan that is divine activity. It is clear in light of Job's previous assumptions and misinterpretations 
that God is the master architect whose wisdom and resourcefulness cannot be matched and are not meant to be understood. We see in each verse that God measures, aligns, stretches, and builds. God lays the foundation and constructs the footings. Everything is created one block at a time. When we see our, an image of our God as one is meticulous about the details, we can see it in these stories. And a God who is precise in design for the cosmos, for the heavens, and for humanity. There is in these stories the answer for us to the question, where is God in all that is happening in my life? Our belief in God is influenced by how we perceive the world. There are distinctions by which humans navigate life and faith. One attempt to define humanity's ways of perceiving can be found in the personality profile called the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. Many of us have taken this self-report inventory over the years in job interviews, and all pastors take it as we go through the requirements of ordination. It's available online in a 10-minute survey if you're interested. I am an ENFJ personality type, which, even knowing me only for four months, would surprise none of you. I am slightly more extroverted than introverted, strongly intuitive rather than sensing, more feeling than thinking, more structured than spontaneous. As an intuitive feeling personality, I give more weight to subjective data than objective data and see life in patterns and in processes more than in what I can touch and see right in front of me. So those of us who perceive the world in subjective ways are more easily open to believing the more, the more that we humans cannot see. We understand the life we see in the patterns unfolding in our lives and in others' lives. For us, it is not true that only seeing is believing. The door is more easily open for us to that which is beyond the objective data. There are those of you who live with an opposite way of perceiving the world and your truth. Only what can be proven is true, and only that which is understood in our minds is reliable. For you, the stories of our faith are difficult, since faith itself is believing what cannot be proven. This is not about intelligence. It is a function of how we are able to perceive the world. I will tell you something. No matter how we perceive the world, we can trust that God's metaphorical hands are much bigger, more capable, and more able to provide everything our spirits need. We can see that our, our hands, our thoughts, and our understanding are limited in comparison to God's vast knowledge and powerful hands. It is more than the collective conscious, unconscious. It is a quantum field, an atmosphere of spiritual intelligence. It is God that is all and in all. God's hands are big enough to carve out creation, yet intimate enough to comfort us when we are brokenhearted. We may not be able to intellectually understand much about God, but like Job, we can be in awe when we see God at work. We can embrace those moments when we are awed by the God things we cannot help but notice in our lives. Or maybe we can invite the divine to show up in our lives in a language we can understand is holy and sacred. 
We can, when we cry out to God, expect to get an answer. There was a time in my life when I was crumpled on the bathroom floor, trapped in a marriage with a man who did not and had never loved me. I cried out to God, this cannot be what you meant by abundant life. I committed myself right then and there to do whatever God would show me to do to find abundant life, that abundant life God did have in mind for me. I thought, of course, that God would make that man look me back. Wouldn't that have been easier? Had I known all that God would require me to give up and leave behind, including that man I adore, I wouldn't have had the courage to do it. But thankfully, our God leads us gently to take one step followed by another, then by another. And truly, compared to that dark place I was in on that day, I am living every day in abundant life. And now my abundant life includes living among you and serving in the United Methodist Church. I will tell you something. If that young woman so desperate to have a life worth living could see this woman I have become, she would be silenced and in awe. She would not have made these 30 years of choices on her own. It would have cost her too much of what she thought would bring her happiness. To look back from here and see how far I've come from that depressed and misguided young woman, a woman who was willing to do anything to find abundant life, I am awestruck by God. I too have learned our God is trustworthy. We can trust a God of great magnitude who intimately and gently walks with us one step at a time and loves us enough not to overwhelm us with a vision of all that God is going to ask of us down the road. When was the last time you were awed by the magnitude of God? It is good news to know that in spite of all we have experienced and all the pain that we might have endured, there is not one of us who is too proud to be silenced and in awe. Our Christian invitation today is this. We're invited this day to be in awe of the images of morning stars, in awe of the divine beings we are told are shouting with joy. We are invited to be silenced and in awe of God's grace that is uniquely woven into the fabric, the tapestry of all God's creation, and by God's grace, is intimately woven into the details of our own lives. We're invited to be in awe of God's wisdom, God's knowledge, and of divine love, a love that is unexplainable and uncontainable. We're invited to be silenced, and in awe, as God reveals God's unlimited ability to be present in all things and present to us in a language we can understand. Let us pray. Loving God, we cannot make sense of the chaos we see in our world, but we can trust that you are at work in it we might years from now be able to look back and see just how these events were woven into the evolution of humanity 
toward peace on earth and justice for all. Help us with that trust. It is in Jesus' name, the name of unconditional love, we pray. Amen. Please get your bulletins and let's stand and say together what we believe. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who works in others and us through the Spirit. We follow in the ways of Jesus, celebrating God's presence, living with respect in creation, loving and serving others, seeking justice and resisting injustice, and seeking out hope and peace. We believe every person, regardless of color, religion, creed, age, class, or orientation, is a child of God. We are connected because we are family. We gather because we all have something to share. We encourage one another and hold each other accountable. But most of all, we love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to page 140 and let's sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.